I'm turning cold and I don't know how long until the suffering stops. A beloved daughter who my mama calls Blessing. And she calls me Blessing while my captors are cursing my life. My name is Blessing, but I am still trying to find mine. They call me Blessing. Blessing, Blessing, Blessing. blessing. And I must be blessed to still be alive while I feel my body turn to anything but mine. I must be blessed to still be alive while I am forced to be a sex slave, to pay a debt that I must pay. And they lie and tell me that I need to work off my debt, but is giving my body away to men 10 and 20 times a day work? Is sex work to feed myself to survive? I see young girls who are getting younger and younger and without consent it becomes rape. I see young girls who look like babies with eyes that plead, save me, please. I see girls who follow in my footsteps. They follow in my trails and they follow in my steps. I don't know how long until the suffering will keep going. I just know that over here, we don't know our brothers, but we live in brothels. And how do you work as a sex slave? I don't know. I just know that I need to keep going, and I have a dream. I have a dream to survive. I have a dream to buy a house for my family one day, to, to go to school, to be educated. I have a dream to be blessed and to live life blessed. Her name is Blessing. blessing. They call me Blessing. I've been a photojournalist in Afghanistan since 2001. For 14 years, I have followed a country in war and its aftermath. This is a story about the legacy of war. In most parts of the world, widowhood is a sad experience. In America, it's sad, but a widow can move on and live a life free and fulfilled. In Afghanistan. In Afghanistan. It's a complete 360, and it comes through three decades of war that have piled on these mounds of widows. Alone, for instance, there are 50,000 to 70,000 widows. In total, I guess around 2 million widows have walked amongst the ashes of the Afghan war. Unless your husband was a policeman, government employee, or soldier, the Afghani government will only pay civilian women 5,000 Afghanis, which is, which is only $75 a month. What makes it worse is that the government doesn't tell the widows of their husband's pensions or the feeble amount of money that they could be given to live on. So most widows don't collect the money. These women immediately become shunned from their families and their homes. They become homeless, abandoned, and left to fend for their own survival. Some of the women, such as Sahar, are forced to marry their late husband's brother out of respect. Respect for who? Most of the women told me they had no education, which means that they were either begging on the streets or cleaning houses just to fend for their own survival. What you truly see here is that at every corner, life is just one big struggle for them. The women, 
every time want it to be photographed. They feel, especially woman to woman, that I care about their situation. They're used to nobody caring at all. I feel that if they didn't have these restrictions put upon them, they would just let me into their world. For example, a fixer would call ahead. He knew what I was doing. I would set up a nice initial meeting over tea, which is the way you do things around there. And the biggest problem was that the brother-in-law or someone else in the family wouldn't allow me to come back. No. I'd take some snapshots during the first meeting and I'd get so excited. And then the door would just slam in my face. <laughs> I've been in and out of the country over so many years and to me, this is just something that doesn't get better for them. Things just don't. This project took a lot longer than I thought it would, but for me it felt like that's okay. Whatever it takes. I'll just keep this going. You like to applaud her. You like to watch them dance. But do you, but do you love, love her when the stage disappears and she transforms from a spectacle into a woman? Tana Santi was second in her class at law school, but she could not become a lawyer. At each interview, she was asked if she had passed the operation. She was urged to become a secretary. And because she was born male, wearing women's clothes in court mocks the sanctity of the judge. Sex work, like St. Karam, brings $6.4 billion into Thailand every year. But her work is not legal. Her work is unprotected. Her work is subject to violence. Prachaya is a supermodel who has appeared in fashion shows and magazines, but was beat as a child, raped as a teenager. She deals with violence, and now she perpetrates existence. Transgender women can work as models in nightclubs, florists, hairstylists, models, sex workers. But as soon as they exist for themselves, a lawyer, a student, a breadwinner, a, a human, human being, being, they mock your sanctity. They scare your children. They face your violence. Don't you love RuPaul? Kinky boots. Ruby Rose. Don't you love to stare and clap? Don't you love when they exist for you? Don't you love how the sex work industry brings billions of dollars and millions of tourists to your country even though you arrest the women doing it? Watch her model. Watch her dance. Watch them as they touch your body. But don't let her be a lawyer, because then she might not need your applause anymore. no other choice. There was no other choice. What is right is to strike before they do. Your weapon is an extension of your mind. You must use it as such. You have eyes to see and hands when your weapon is not enough. When you're forced into something, you learn two things. How to fight and how to survive. It's interesting to see your father lose. 
At that moment, you realize there is no hope. It's interesting to grow up before your body does and to have death be expected of you. When you don't have a choice, it's easy to let the mind wander. And the mind is a dangerous place. And some say, I am lucky to be a man. They took my father and my mother, but they did not take me. They won't take me. And if I have to kill every last one of the scum with my bare hands, I will do it. I saw blood that was not mine two days ago. I was not the cause. When a man lets the life leave his eyes, he is no longer a man. I have never seen my own. I was given a gun two days after. It is no longer heavy because I am strong. Sometimes I aim at the trucks as they pass. And as I see the white faces pass my barrel, I think, do they think cameras have the same power? If so, I'd like to ride in a truck. Then maybe I could get a camera too. When you become a man, you learn two things, how to shoot to kill and how to disappear. I learned both in the same day, which must mean I am a man. But I don't feel like one. My commander always tells me when you need something, you take it. Food, take it. Property, take it. Girl, take it. In a girl, I see an opportunity. I will only live so long. A girl can make my bloodline live on. In a girl, I see a vessel for the future. She can be my slave, she can be my wife. She is young, she will listen. I am young, I will listen. There is no other choice. I must submit or they shoot me. If I resist, they shoot me. If I scream, they shoot me. Silence, violence, in endless cycle. They choose who they want to marry. They choose from the lives they have stolen. Hundreds of us beaten and made pregnant against our will, some as young as 12. Hundreds of us locked in one big room, brought in on trucks where mass rape is synonymous with staying alive and assault is synonymous with holy union. 100 degree heat, these walls don't shelter me. These hands won't protect me. My voice grows weak, my mind grows weary. My body is a battleground, hundreds of little battlegrounds, hundreds of us taken. Take it. It's not stealing if it didn't belong to anyone before. She's parked in the house with the rest of the girls. I take her into another room. I take her to mate, to marry. I take her, I make her, I plant my seed so I can live on. As it says in the manual, I must do what is virtuous. I must do what is right. And they see it as worship. He says he's doing it to get closer to his God. God, please help me. Is my body's only purpose to carry on these soldiers' genes? Do I matter beyond what my body can do? What her body can do is create the next generation of what we've created. 
She's a part of an important plan for self-perpetuation of man. Her captivity praised in the eyes of my savior, for she is of the wrong faith, and my God blesses this affair. And they pray, and we pray sometimes too. They make us sick, they take us, they make us so sick. What can I do? What can she do? You only matter when I decide what you're good for. Everything I am, everything I could be, everything that is uniquely me. I take it. Please be the rain. I am a strain. I'm made of pain. When I'm a tree, you'll see my word. But I need love on Mother Earth. I stay like stone. I move like water, I'm someone's friend, I'm someone's daughter. When I'm a tree, you'll see my word, but I have